Hello, my name is Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Modular. Today we're looking at the Tenderfoot Lattice. Now the Lattice is a deliciously simple 12 step sequencer. 12 steps, 12 knobs, 12 lights. That's more or less it. But no, there's more to it than that. But that is the level of simplicity that just fills me with joy. Here it is, look, here's a close up. 12 knobs, 12 knobs representing 12 pitches, or rather representing 12 control voltages. Voltages which we can then interpret as pitches, or we can interpret them as modulation, if we like, but it's just voltage. But commonly, we use a sequencer like this to generate melody, and that's something that this is extraordinarily good at. We're also gonna be looking at cells, which is this weird thing here. Now cells is an expander to lattice, and it adds extra, very welcome and interesting functionality. It includes this weirdo mechanical keypad, but we'll come to that in a minute. Let's stick with lattice for now, and let's see if we can work out why I absolutely adore this little sequencer. So here we are, lattice. That's nice and simple, 12 knobs in kind of a matrix of three by four, which brings interesting things all of itself. But first of all, the basics. What we want, we want the output of this, which is generating control voltages. We want it to control the pitch of an oscillator. Now it doesn't have to be the pitch of an oscillator. You could use it to control all sorts of things because all it's doing is generating some voltage. Let me show you that by plugging this into the pitch input on the oscillator and taking the output of the oscillator into Newton over here so that we can hear it. So this first knob here is lit. This is the current knob that's active. And as we move it, it changes the pitch. There you go, that's how sequences work. All you've got is a certain amount of voltage being generated by a knob or a control. And we're gonna step through these in series, in sequence. There you go, that's all there is to it really. So how do we make this work? Well, it has no internal clock of its own. It needs to be sent a clock. A clock, just a pulse, which is gonna knock it on to the next knob in sequence. So I'm gonna take something from my Batumi over here, just a square wave, which uh, I'm taking from over here. And I'm gonna stick that in. And now you can see the lights are moving along. It's moving along in sequence. I can speed up the LFO and that speeds up the clock. Take a clock from anywhere, whatever it is you've got generating some timing in your rack, it doesn't really matter. It all has a similar effect. So if I turn the oscillator back on, we have our 12 steps. Now what I love about Lattice is that it's so inherently musical. It has everything there. It invites you to play and to mess about. And there's something about the 12 steps that locks into the sort of groove you don't find in eight steps or 16 steps. Not sure I'm explaining that right because it doesn't hit the four sort of floor, four beats, four beats, four beats, four beats, and continuing to loop it loops around halfway through the next section if you know what i mean so it does 12 then it does 24 and then you do get back into the same groove but because it's using 12 steps it just has a different feel 
it's like you can start using this first column here as purely bass notes. So this is bass and the rest is melody. So you get your boom, 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 and then other things going on. Well, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to restrict you in that. You could do it on this column or this column or elsewhere. But all I'm trying to say is that it pulls you into certain structures, certain rhythms, which are perhaps unusual to what you're normally dealing with. <laughs> And because it's all there, because it's all out on the table, you don't have to find where your notes are. You don't lose track of what pitch you're at because it's there. Each knob is pointing to the pitch that you're hearing. You have this solid connection between the hardware, what the hardware is doing, what the parameters and the knobs are pointing at and what you can actually hear. And on some sequences, that's completely disconnected because it has so many other parameters involved, so many other things that you can do that the knobs become multifunctional or the sliders become multifunctional. So they no longer represent the pitch you are hearing. With the lattice, each knob always, without fail, represents the pitch you are hearing. And that sounds like a stupidly obvious thing, but it's that tie in the way it ties the visual and your ears together in such a simple, straightforward, clear layout that you can see, that you can get your fingers around. There's not one knob and a button you're pressing. You're not putting a number of sliders together or anything else. It's just this. It's just this. And that's all it is. That's all it does, really. 12 steps. There you go. Off you go. Okay, there's a few more things to it, but that is basically it. But that is dreamy. In this world of complex modulation and modular synthesis, where everything is doing all sorts of crazy weird things and you don't know what half these things do half the time, you know what this does. You can see it, you can hear it and understand it completely. And that's, it just hits you like a massive breath of fresh air. And you go, oh, such a relief. It just reveals itself and goes, it's just notes going into something, man, that's all it's doing. You go, what, really? I don't have to mess around with gate length. I don't have to mess around with accents or anything else. No, no, it's just, it's just voltages going into something. Oh, right. Well, that's bloody marvelous. And look, as I play with it, all sorts of stuff happens. <laughs> And there's something about that four by three. It's really weird. I can create melodies in this or, or rhythms, I suppose, of melody that I've never done on any other sequencer. It's just the flow. It's really, I, I just find myself sinking into it really well. And the layout just enhances that. So I do tend to be playing with these four and these four as a group, as if that's something to do with each other. Of course, it doesn't have to be, but that's just the way it feels it's the way you intuit your way into it. Or you might start finding yourself going across. So these three are going to be something or other that's going to play. <laughs> Thank you. 
and you could take everything else down low. But if of course you want it a bit more musical, then pop it through a quantizer. Got my micro scale here, pop that in. It's just a joy, an absolute joy to play with because I'm not being distracted by a load of other things. I mean, often in a sequence, for instance, if I'm using the Variegate 4 Plus, I tend to just set it going and then ignore it because I'm playing elsewhere and the melody actually becomes less important. With the Lattice, it brings the melody back and the melody becomes the focus. It becomes exactly what you're playing with all the time. And you don't have to, to worry about it. You can go off and play with something, come back, and you still know exactly what the melody's doing. And you can interact with it in exactly the same way as you could before, because it hasn't changed. It hasn't flipped. No menu's been triggered. It's not doing anything different other than it was before. And I can go back in and I can start again and do some more tweaking and get some more melody out of it. And then I find myself playing with this more than anything else, you know, because it's there, it's instant. It responds the visual connection, the hardware connection, the sound connection. Oh, I mean, I can't believe I'm ranting so much about something as simple as a 12 step sequencer. You know, usually you're running on about, oh, the polyrhythms, man, and the, and the way you can do modulation per step, or you can root this in and the accents and the glide, glide lengths and pull them end up between here and here and the rhythms that it's creating. No, it's 12 steps just being stepped through, 12 steps relevant to your clock. And so, the rhythms are being generated within itself somehow by the melody that you're playing with. Oh man, it's just super. Now, it's not all just 12 steps. There are other things. I've got these other three holes here. What do they do, Robin? Well, let me tell you. First one, do you see that triangle? Do you see how it's orientated and it's pointing down? Well, whenever this receives a gate or a trigger or a pulse, it knocks it down one. So if you stick the clock into there, it then starts rotating this way. Do you see? And you see this one with its triangle sort of pointing that way. Whenever this receives a pulse, it then steps one to the right. And now you enjoy the wonder of a four step and a three step sequencer. But of course, if you split that clock off and put a slower pulse into one of them, it now starts moving it in interesting ways. And you can use this movement to generate kind of chordal structures or verse chorus, that kind of thing. To change those clocks around. 
So now I've got four channels of three notes going on. So you've essentially taken it from a 12 step sequencer into, well, I don't know that, 12, then 12, then 12, then 12, depending on how many times you're repeating it, depending on when the clock is coming in to move it on, it creates itself into these little sections, either three sections of four notes or four sections of three notes. And it's, it's brilliant. It's a delight. I can set up a change here that I could trigger manually rather than having it triggered from a clock. I could move it across manually by punching some kind of manual trigger, like the light strip thing I've got here. So you hit that, hit that, creates a gate, and that goes on. And suddenly this very simple 12-step sequencer becomes, oh, wow, versatile, interesting, becomes a, a three-step sequencer, but you've got four channels of it. Not channels, four versions of it, four verses, four different movements, or three different movements, of four, or you could put it together, if you've got a, a clock that's very irregular, you could move between those two eight and then have that four play by itself. You know, you can do whatever you like because you can clock it all over the place. Or you could stick the clock back into there and now it's moving in its regular bit. But also every now and again, it's been forced on by this. So it ends up being slightly different or you can push it across. Or put another one in. And out of that, it starts to generate other rhythms, other patterns. Now there's one more pole over here, which is here, which is a reset. So if you send that a pulse, it'll hop it back to one. There you go. Obviously, depending on how often you send that pulse. Now it doesn't have to be a regular pulse. You could bring something in that has a pattern feel to it. For instance, from my random rhythm over there, I could run that in. One thing we haven't talked about so far is gates, because the lattice, being of a simple nature, doesn't create any. And so if you wanted to introduce a little bit of envelope shaping, you can do that. You just have to take the gate from somewhere else. So if we use our edge cutter here to add a little bit of shaping to our sound, we can take the output. plug it into our muton in order to apply the envelope. And then we can take the clock from wherever. We take a clock that's running at about the same speed, then we should be able to fire it at the same time as the note. Let's give that a go. Thank <laughs> you. 
like so. One other thing just to quickly demonstrate is that because this is generating control voltage, it's only the oscillator that's interpreting that as a pitch change. We could use this for a bit of modulation. So let's take the output of our oscillator, plug it into our filter here, take the other side back into the muton. And then we're going to take the voltage per octave or the voltage coming out of the quantizer, why not? Plug that into the CV input on the filter. So now our lattice sequence is controlling the cutoff. You know, it's weird, I very rarely do this, or at least it hadn't really occurred to me to do this before. I usually use some kind of sample and hold or some other random generator in order to, you know, mess about with the cutoff through modulation. Whereas this is deliberately setting voltages in order to affect that cutoff. And that's a lot more interesting. <laughs> so from this very simple starting place of these 12 knobs and these 12 voltages, it becomes really very, very interesting. I mean, playing with 12 knobs by itself, that is fun and fascinating and quite a little journey because you do get you get stuck into that into that feel it's that 12 note feel and it's nice and it's all there as i keep banging on about it the voltages are there all the time you can see what's going to happen you can see that it's going to go up and down and where it's going to go and then because of that, you can make an informed decision of where you want to change that to. It becomes a piece of performance technology. It's not just a set a sequence and let it run and then you play with something else. No, it's saying, come play with the melody, make the melody different, make the melody change. Don't just play the same thing over and over again, or play the same thing over and again, then move it to something else, then move it to something else, and then get in and change that note again. <laughs> It's very playful. It won't let you leave it alone. All right, this, this sequencing the cutoff thing is my new favorite thing. I'm going to be doing that all the time from now on. <laughs> yeah, right, okay, so where was I? Yeah, next up is the cells. Let's go and find out what this could possibly bring to this party. Cells then. Ooh, look. Now I know I've sort of been selling the lack of features on the lattice as a bit of a feature. You're not getting distracted by all these multifunctional features. Yeah, true enough. But there's also some things which are kind of missing that you'd like to see on any sequencer. And Cells sorts a lot of that out. First of all, we better deal with this fella here. 
what's that all about? Well, as you can see, as I hit a key, it changes to the knob over here. Obviously, 12 keys, 12 knobs, that's what that does. Let's hear a bit of that. So, as is kind of self-evident, these keys play the notes. So you can now, suddenly, if you wish, use it as a bit of a, as a keyboard. Obviously it's playing whatever that is set to. I mean, one use of this is that you can create your sequence. Much easier and quicker than you can with just a lattice because you have no ability to step on the lattice unless you apply a clock. Let's bring our clock back in. Now our keypad here can now re-trigger it or pause it depending on what you want to do. Okay, so that's that. Anything else? No, not really. That's all that sort of does. It doesn't light up. You don't get to play snake on it. It doesn't flash in all sorts of different colors. It doesn't, no, that's about it. It just selects, it just selects the notes. It feels like a mechanical keyboard, like a QWERTY one. It's a bit like the drum computer from Erica since, I suppose, but sort of single use. <laughs> functionality and it's an awful lot of real estate you're using for quite a relatively simple function. Now the other features are these things along the top here. Let's start with the button. What the button does, it reverses the flow so now the sequence is running backwards. This first input here is also a forward reverse thing. So this is getting a pulse from my clock divider over here and it's now turned it into a bit of a nine notes this way, nine notes back. So the next input is a random input. So I take the clock that's running the whole lattice and plug it into there. It will now select steps completely randomly. Now the next one, this input here, this selects a step dependent on control voltage inputs. If I take a control voltage from my maths here, on nod number two, I can move through the steps. So I could, for instance, put a sine wave through it. So what this sort of envelope input does is allows you to send in a modulation, some kind of control voltage, which you control which note is going to go to next. It's very interesting. 
If you were to send in a random signal, of course, that would give you the same effect as sticking uh, a steady clock into the random input, if you see what I mean. So cells is all about the selection of those notes. Lattice will run by itself, it will run in a line, it will run up and down, it will run side to side, or a combination of all of those. But adding in cells allows you to select the notes differently, either by a keypad, by a random input, by a CV input, and also to reverse the flow. The other thing it brings is this one here, which is a gate output. Hurrah! So that is one thing perhaps that's most missing from the lattice, is its own gate. So now if we run, if we run the clock in, We can use the gate output to trigger our envelope to add some shape to our sound. And that's another thing you can use the, the keys for, for selecting your banks. If you're seeing this as three lots of four notes, or four lots of three notes, you can use cells to move from one to the other. Or if you clock it left to right,
So yeah, I totally love it. I love this thing. I love it for its simplicity. The fact that I can sit down and plug it into something and just get 12 notes out, but 12 notes that invite me to play with them. That's the point. It's not a fire and forget sequencer. Although you could do that too. I mean, you can hear it. That's awesome, and that's just from messing about, you know. There's no plan involved, just turning it on and having a go. And I, I love it. I love that I can see what's going on, that I know which note it's on, I know which pitch it's on. That connection I keep talking about is real, it's there, it's tangible, it's, it's physical, fleshy somehow in the way that... In that works. I mean, obviously, the, the more clocks you stick in and the wilder it gets, the less you can really follow that in any kind of sensible fashion. But it's just fun along making its own little tune up, which is fantastic. But no, it's not his own tune. It's my tune, damn it. I've chosen every single factor. <laughs> That's really nice. <laughs> So yeah, there's something very tangible about it. I, I like it. The simplicity I keep banging on about just brings, brings it up to a level that allows me to play and to feel like I'm in charge and feel like I'm mastering it. I'm not floundering around just randomly pushing buttons. I actually have something to do, which is, which is really nice. It's good and it flows. I mean, at a recent gig, that gig that I did last year, I used both of them. I used one in each row, like so, and was able to run two sort of competing melodies against each other and then play with them live. So the melody changed, the tune changed. I was no longer kind of trapped to a single sequence or a couple of sequences that I'm then modulating everything else. I mean, that's completely fine. That's completely normal. But with Lattice, it very much encourages you to change the tune, to change the melody. That's nice. That's interesting. And pushes you in a whole other direction. And you find yourself coming up with stuff that you perhaps weren't expecting. You know, you're not learning patterns. You're not drawing from a bunch of presets in order to change pattern from here to here. You're creating it on the fly. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. It's not like some other sequences where you find yourself lost in other pages. So you've been adjusting the accent, or you've been adjusting the glide length, and now suddenly you've no idea where the pitch really was. So you're having to move something about. I mean, I guess I'm talking about the, the variegate, really. That's what that forces me into. And that's not a whole lot of fun during a performance. This is much more like generator, much more like the analog solutions generator, where you've got those three channels of 16 knobs. I mean, that's a much bigger affair. There's you know, other things going on with that. But with Lattice, you've got these, these 12 notes. And it's, again, it's those 12 notes that's pushing a different rhythm, a different feel, a different loop that's going on. I mean, what is this? What is this doing? I don't even know where the loop is, or even if there is one. It feels like there is, because there's definitely a rhythm going on. But it's different, it's unexpected. It's not perhaps what you would find in an eight or a 16 or 32 step sequencer. That's interesting. The cells thing, I don't know. I'm not sold on this keypad, I have to say. I'm sorry, I'm not really sold on it. I mean, if it did something else, if it did more, if it lit up, if you could play snake on it, if it created, I don't know, patterns, or maybe you save patterns into it, but then that would destroy the whole point of having those knobs and the indicators on them showing you where the voltage is. I don't know, it just feels like it's a lot of real estate, it's a lot of technology and hardware, stuff there to do one kind of very simple thing. And that's just the selection of the notes. I mean, it does, of course, it brings in this performance element where you can play them, but you know, playing a QWERTY keyboard musically, I don't know how great that is in particular. It's good. 
if you're using it in columns or in rows for stepping between those, but the timing has to be bang on in order to make that happen. And you're more likely to get that right using a clock from somewhere else that's divided from the clock you've originally started with. So, well, I don't know, it has minimal use in that regard. To play some notes, sure. I mean, you could, you know, lose the clock and just go, I'm playing these things. I suppose. I mean, you could do it in a good way, not in a crap way, like I am, and that would be effective. I'm sure. However, uh, Peter, the bloke behind Tenderfoot, has also perhaps considered that because he's also releasing an expansion, which is just the holes at the top, is just the forward and reverse, just the randomization, the envelope input, control voltage thingy, and the gate output. And those elements by far are the best thing about cells, in my opinion. You may love this, that's fine. You're allowed to love that. I'm allowed not to love it quite so much, I think. But it would be better, I think, but certainly in HP, because it's about four HP wide, to add that expander to Lattice. I mean, Lattice by itself, it's awesome, phenomenal. It brings a smile to my face every time I use it, but it is quite basic. Having a forward and reverse, having a random and having a gate output those things, I think, are vital enough to really have been included in the lattice in the first place. But if they did, then you would be cramping it. You would be having to add further inputs and it's just not going to fit on the panel. If make a bigger panel, maybe therefore more expensive, more complex, etc., etc. So with the lattice, you get a fabulous 12 step sequencer and a three channel four step and a four channel three step and all of the combinations therein. If you want a gate output, if you want a random output and a forward and reverse switch, then the cells expansion or the smaller version of the cells expansion is definitely for you. And I think that makes it a more complete product. But overall, if you find yourself using a module a lot, then that's gotta be worth its place in your rack. And I'm using this all the time. And not in a regular sequence of fire and forget kind of way, but in a sequence of create tunes and manipulate tunes and change melodies kind of way. And I've never really done that before. Not on the fly. That's brilliant. So there you go. I hope that was useful. You'll find a lot more reviews and other things in the YouTube channel along with the monthly get together we have and chat about music tech news. Come and join us on that, because that's really exciting. I'm gonna fiddle with this a little bit more, and in the meantime, you go and make some tunes. <laughs>